So this equation right here <clears throat> is actually a conservation of energy equation. Notice that in the previous line we had said net work is change in pressure. Uh, I mean negative change in pressure times this differential volume. And then we said this is kinetic energy times volume. Oh, this isn't really kinetic energy though. This is kinetic energy per volume times volume because density, well, density is, check it out, density is mass divided by volume. So this is kinetic energy per volume multiplied by volume. Then when we cancel out volume, we get kinetic energy per volume. Over here, this must be some other kind of energy per volume. So pressure, pressure is a kind of energy per volume. And I'd like you to think about what it could possibly be. Think about uh, pumping up a tire or, um, well, things like that, popping a balloon. Think about what kind of energy a pressure actually is if you've got something under pressure. There are actually cars, golf carts mostly, that you put a big tank of compressed air in the back and then you sip off of that sucker to make the car go around. It was considered as a major means of uh, transportation, but it has some technical issues like uh, explosions. And the tank is usually pretty heavy too because it's got to be strong enough so that it doesn't explode. So let's keep moving through. I'd like to consider instead of this situation here where we had fluid getting compressed, not compressed, but getting into a narrower um, area and therefore a higher speed, I'd like you to consider instead, wait a second, is it clear to you that this equation tells me how, this equation here tells me how speed changes when pressure changes, or how pressure changes when speed changes. So this is a very powerful equation, and we'll investigate its full uh, results later on. But right now, I want you to consider this situation. Now I'm going to have fluid moving upward. So this is my y-axis, and I'm gonna start it at, uh, let's say here's zero, here's y1, and then I'm gonna have it move up to y2. So here's a little tube of fluid, and that tube is gonna stay at the same diameter all the time, and it's going to turn here, and this will be the outflow of the tube. Same area, same diameter, nothing interesting except that our tube has risen. So what do you think is going to happen to the speed? Based on diarrhea, we know that the same speed must be present here as is present here. So there has to be the same amount of mass going through each section, so we know that those speeds are the same. But the pressure, well the pressure could be different, but the speed's going to be the same at least. Down here we'll define this to be, <laughs> what? What happened? Okay, this is supposed to be Y1. This is where we're starting and that's where we're ending up. And zero will have to be somewhere down here. I don't even care about zero, but <clears throat> just saying we're at some starting height and then we're at some finishing height. Let's figure out what happens. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to propose that the pressure could be a little bit different. Um, I guess, yeah, we we'll probably have to be careful about this. This pressure here, this is pressure one down at the bottom, and this is pressure two right here. This pressure is pressure one minus, it'll be less? I think it will. You know this rho g h thing we've been carrying around a little bit? Well, here's rho, and here's g, and here's this height difference. h is y2 minus y1, so that's the positive height, but we're saying the pressure up top is less than the pressure down at the bottom. Usually we'd have pressure, um, pressure. let me just write that down here. Typically we're looking at this, this equation, pressure at the bottom is pressure at the top plus rho g h. I'm kind of just using the opposite of that statement right here. Pressure at the top is, pressure at the top is, Mm -hmm. pressure at the bottom minus rho g h. And notice how I've written <clears throat> the height as y2 minus y1. So then I want to consider the work done by the pressure. Pressure is going to be doing work here, and that's work 1 plus work 2. And the difference in work from the pressure is simply p1 minus p2 times that 
differential volume, that small chunk of volume, just as we saw in the previous video. So you can check that to figure out where I'm getting this. But, <clears throat> but gravity is also doing work. Is gravity doing positive or negative work as the, uh, as the stuff goes up? Let's figure that out. Gravity's work is, well, I'm gonna put a minus sign right here and I'm gonna say it's negative, that chunk of mass that goes up, times baby G, times Y2 minus Y1. So this says that gravity is doing negative work. Y2 is bigger than Y1, and gravity acts down while the thing goes up. I suppose that's fair then. So M, I don't like to write M. You know I don't like to write M. So I'm gonna write rho times delta V, and then I'm gonna put a baby G here, and then I'm gonna try to squeeze in Y2 minus Y1, and then I'll close my parentheses just barely. <clears throat> then, I want you to consider what's happening with the velocities. There's no change, right? <clears throat> so I'll write but, and then I'll say that uh, the change in kinetic energy equals zero. Ooh, change in kinetic energy has something to do with work, right? So then I can say work net equals, and I'm gonna put a little parentheses here, equals zero. Let's just remember that, that the net work is going to be equal to zero. But let's write it out. It's the work done by the pressure plus the work done by gravity, and they must cancel out. The result of that is that I've got P1 minus P2, I'm taking this equation and plug it in right here, times delta V, and then I have to, oh, I gotta get this gravity equation in here, and then I'm supposed to add the work done by, where's my minus sign? Oh, dang it! Look at this, see this minus sign right here? That minus sign is supposed to be right there, also. You have to have that minus sign right there. That's a big, big mistake of mine. Then I need to subtract rho times delta V times baby G times Y2 minus Y1. All right, do I have the work done by gravity? It's a negative number, and I'm adding it to the work done by the pressure. It's a positive number, and the whole dang thing, the whole dang thing is equal to sweet nothing. You see what I can cancel? Ding! This is very, very powerful. We've canceled the volume again. And I'm going to compare like terms. I'm gonna get everything that's uh, got a P1, everything that's got a one on one side, and I'm gonna to try to get rid of these minus signs and all this nonsense over here. So I'm gonna say that we get P1 plus, now it's gonna be plus because I've got negative sign here, and negative sign here, and I'm keeping it on the left side, so those cancel out, P1 plus uh-oh, rho times g times y1 equals, now on the right side, p2 is going to be positive, p2 is positive, and over here I've got a negative times a positive, but I'm moving it over to the right side, so it's going to be positive again, plus rho times g times y2. Beautiful equation. Let's put that in a box, give you a little flower pot, if you want. Here we go. Flower pot. I'll put this one on its head. It's okay, you can still turn it over and put a flower in there. Sure you can. Generally though, this equation tells me how pressure changes as height changes. It seems like pressure goes down as height goes up, which is reasonable because if I take my hose from my house and stand it straight up, the water won't come out very much. Very reasonable, right? But I want you to take this equation and combine it with, oh shoot, where's that other one? I got it, I got it. Let's combine it with this equation to make a super equation to rule them all. Here it is. My new equation. In summary, I get to say that P1 plus, this is, this is um, I guess, I guess I should just be honest with you, pressure is a kind of energy divided by volume. This is a potential energy divided by volume. It's the energy, the potential energy per unit volume for pressure right there. I guess if I have more volume with the same pressure, then I've got a greater amount of energy. That makes sense. A small tank at 100 PSI doesn't have much energy, but a big tank at 100 PSI has a much more energy. So you go to Lowe's, and you wanna buy something that holds a whole bunch of energy, you gotta buy one of those tanks that's bigger than you are. All right, so I'm gonna put this in summary, one equation to rule them all. I'm gonna have P1 plus one half rho times V1 squared, that's the speed, plus rho times g times y1 
equals P2 plus one half rho times V2 square, keep it coming, plus rho times G times Y2. This is Bernoulli's equation. Mr. Wojak is fond of saying that when you are in the shower, you are never alone because Bernoulli is there with you. You can think a lot about Bernoulli's equation. This has incredible implications and you can do lots of cool problems with it. But notice, it's not on your physics sheet in this form. Check your cardstock sheet and see how it's different. But this is potential energy. This is kinetic energy and this is, what kind of energy is this? It looks like MGH, right? This must be another form of potential energy. Good luck. Play around with it. Make sure you follow everything that I've done.